when I first got this property, it was set up with two pumps. It had this pump, a half horsepower shallow jet pump, and by Goulds, and uh, it's a 2003. According to the serial number here, it's uh, hard to see it, but JO3. And down here on the motor, you can see also 8H03. So that's the manufacturing years, 2003. And uh, I got, you know, it, it was sitting uh, unused for three years in 2016, so it worked for about 10 years and it just sat. And it still worked. This one was hooked up to a, another well. It's an older shallow well jet pump by, my, it says Montgomery Ward Signature. One stage. And uh, I didn't even test this one to see if it worked. It was hooked up to a well that had been disconnected. So I pulled the well pipes out and found rust holes. So probably what ended up happening was the reason they retired it is because of the well pipe failing, not because of this pump. That's what I would suspect. Got a little pressure switch in here, adjustments. I'm not sure what year this is. Um, it says serial number 66C, and there's a serial number kind of imprinted into here that has an 83. So I'm not sure how old this thing actually is, but I didn't even test it. I just planned on scrapping it. It sure is heavy. So you got the 2003 Ghouls, and then I got this one on Craigslist. It's a 1988. This one is convertible. It's set up right now for shallow. That's convertible for deep well as well. And uh, I hooked it up and tested it just out of curiosity, and it works fine. Um, it's It was a little loud at first, so I sprayed it with some uh, Teflon lubrication spray. It's uh, actually for chains. And it's probably not something you'd want to use on, portable, on a portable water situation. This probably has PTFE in it or something, but I just got a little bit into the motor to try to help the... I don't, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not exactly a science, that's for sure. I doubt that what I did was necessary, but it quieted it down. It was making this high-pitched kind of screeching sound. God knows how long it was sitting unused. I got this out of the basement of somebody on Craigslist that was retiring an old well tank and well pump, and they had switched to city water a long time ago. So I grabbed it and it actually does work. It works really well. It seems to work just as well as the 2003 model. And this one here is a 2013 that I got on Craigslist. And uh, now I had this hooked up to a, a well that was that I had just put in with a pair of PVC well points. So it actually pumps a lot faster than where the when the, where the old well was hooked up with this 2003 pump because the screen was obstructed and clogged and just. I don't even know, it might have been, even might have been sucking air. I don't think so, but it sounded like there was a little bit of cavitation going on. So maybe because it was not able to really pull much through the screen. I did pull that pipe and that screen out of the ground, though, and they were okay. They were a little clogged up, but they weren't, they weren't terrible. Um, it was still functioning. It was still pressurizing the tanks and serving the house. It's just that this new one is a lot more efficient. It's a lot faster, a lot quieter. And I don't think it's because of the pump. I think it's because of the well. So both of these 2003 and 1988 are perfectly functional pumps. They work great. Uh, there's no leaks in the seals, not a single bit. Now this one is a Everbuilt, which I think is a Home Depot thing. And uh, it's surprisingly light. And it does work. It actually works really well. It's, it seems to be efficient. It's very quiet. However, the, the only well pump that I have that has a leak is this one. And it's basically, this is not even, even an old pump. Um, I forgot off the top of my head how old it is, but it was only used for a couple years. I got this one on Craigslist. A guy had it sitting on top of a, a teal uh, well, well tank that was much older than this pump is. And uh, it has a little bit of a leak right around the seal inside here. And it's just a couple drops, but a leak is a leak. And when the pump sits for a while, it'll fill up some water sitting on top of the tank which will get rusty. So I don't love that at all. But I do love the fact that it's so light and so quiet and so cheap. I think you can get these things a dime a dozen on eBay. Uh, like in the 30, some odd, 30 to $40 range for a used pump. And uh, it gets the job done, you know, in a pinch. But I don't know. I, don't, I hate the fact that it leaks. And when this 1988 pump over here doesn't, that, that really says something. 
This one is a Flotec. It's a three-quarter horse. It's also pretty reasonably light compared to what a three-quarter horsepower Gould. That I, I had one not too long ago. It was just super heavy. But I haven't tested this one out yet. My friend wants me to put a well in in his basement. He's got a he's got an old well that we just wanted to put it up as put it in as a backup system. We're probably going to use this one. It's got a three-quarter inch outlet and a one and a quarter inch inlet, and uh, it says it was pre-wired for 240 volts. I haven't um, done anything to it. I haven't experimented with it, but I should. I'd be interested to find out if this one works. It was a really cheap deal on Craigslist. All of these were really cheap on Craigslist. Um, so you, you know, it's nice to uh, get a chance to sort of experiment with a variety of pumps. Uh, one thing I will point out is that these pressure switches are maybe a little intimidating for someone that doesn't hasn't worked on them before, but they're actually pretty simple. This is a, this pressure switch is actually pushed on by this spring, and from beneath, from the pressure coming in through the when the water the water line on the inside on the uh, outlet side of the pump. So as the pressure drops, it will push this down and click it on. So you can actually simulate that by squeezing this, which simulates the fact of the, of this thing uh, reducing its pull from the bottom. And then if you want to, so you can kick it on by squeezing it, and you can kick it off by pushing up on it. You just want to be really, if you're going to, I don't recommend doing that, but if you're going to do that, make sure you're really careful not to be getting near the, the electrical part of this. So basically, this is your main screw. This thing, if you tighten it down, it will increase the cut on and cut off pressure of the system. So you can make it a 2040, a 3050, a 4060. Um, and then this little screw in the back is for the high end. So if you tighten this down, it'll increase the cut out pressure, and if you loosen it, it'll decrease the cut out pressure. And the cool thing about this is that you don't have to have a 20 psi spread if you don't want to. So if you reduce this until the screw is jangling in here, so you know that it's having absolutely no effect on your system, now you don't have a 20 psi spread. You have more like a in this in the case of this pump, it is about 15 psi which I actually do kind of like that because I don't want my pump to drop, I don't want my pressure to drop all the way down to a super low level, but I also don't want to increase my pressure to a super high level. So I actually like to use this screw to reduce that from 20 PSI, or actually you can increase it to 25 PSI spread if you use this. You can increase your cutout pressure, and then you can control the whole thing by this main screw. So the idea, I have mine set up so that it kicks on at 39 PSI and kicks off at 54. That gives me uh, where I'm most of the time I'm hanging out in the 40 psi range. They click it on, it'll pump it up to about 54 and automatically kicks off. They spend most of his time in the 40 psi range. So it's nice to be able to have some control over this. You don't have to be intimidated, you can play with these. There's only one thing to keep in mind and that is if you if you change your cut in pressure, you need to keep in mind the pressure of your tank, the air pressure that's in this tank. So the idea is you're supposed to keep your air pressure about 2 PSI lower than your cut-in pressure on your, on your uh, switch here. So now you can have your pressure, if you have your pressure a lot lower than it's supposed to be, it won't be pushing on the water bladder as hard. And that means that the water bladder itself can stretch more, which means you're going to get a little more capacity in your water. But if you increase the pressure of your, of your bladder, It'll be able to maintain the pressure that you're you're, you're calling for. Now, there, the other the other downside is that if you set your pressure too high in the air and too low on your switch, it will actually collapse the bladder before the pump kicks on. So what you'll experience is your needle will drop and drop and drop as it's emptying out the tank, and all of a sudden it'll make make a huge drop, and then the pump will kick on. And that's what you're trying to avoid by keeping the air pressure in the bladder lower than the cut in pressure of the pump. When I first got this this well had uh, a, what I would consider to be a really cheesy setup here on the outlet side. It basically had a, a plastic T and a rubber hose that connected it to the system with a bunch of clamps. And I really didn't like the look of that. Um, it looked like, I mean it worked, don't get me wrong. I think it was a washing machine hose that they used actually and it did do the job. It held up to the pressure. But it just, it didn't look good and it certainly didn't feel good. In other words, if that thing sprung a leak, um, you could have yourself quite a mess on your hands. So I just wanted to, but I wanted to be able to do something cheap that it was also sturdy without spending a lot of money on anything fancy. So basically what I did here was a one inch, three quarter inch uh, bushing of PVC, Schedule 40. 
and then that reduced down to a three quarter inch female so I could use a three quarter inch male end which are, those are pretty standard and not very expensive and then you have a little bit of a three quarter inch nipple going into this T and then another nipple going into a three quarter inch female and then this is a, a three quarter inch to one quarter inch adapter so I could screw in a one quarter inch pressure gauge and also this can unscrew and you can use this to fill to prime your pump on the first use um, and this is a stainless steel fitting it's actually cheaper than the brass so I've I had no objection to using that it hasn't caused me any problems of corrosion or whatnot it hasn't had any leaks it's been great I, I use stainless steel whenever I can if it's cheaper than brass I say go for it it's also strong as hell it's probably a lot stronger than brass so you do want to be careful we don't want to go too too crazy with it but you really don't need to uh, these things seal up pretty good they made up really good so basically coming out of this tee it's just another nipple for this uh, pr press fit hose to fit on and uh, it's really convenient because you can put it on and take it off very quickly and easily if you need to swap something out or work on something with no clamps to worry about I've never had any of these leak they're, they're reusable uh, and they're real easy to work with I did the same thing. This is another. I had both these pumps hooked up. I'd like to get a set up where I have a, a backup pump that's ready to go at any time. I did pretty much the same thing, except for here I used a one-inch male, which is kind of a it's a more expensive fitting. So I prefer to use the use this plastic adapter and then use the three-quarter inch male rather than trying to find a one-inch male, um, especially if you're going to be at Lowe's. If you buy this from a supply house, you're probably talking four, five, six bucks for that fitting. And I did exactly the same thing. I put a T. This is where the shark bite hose can fit. Here's a uh, three-quarter inch where you can use for a fill. And uh, stainless uh, adapter. Actually, that one is brass. I did use a brass for that unit. And that, probably, that adapter right there might have been uh, 4 or $5. I'm not sure off the top of my head. And for the inlet side, I used one and a quarter inch PVC. And I wrapped it with four wraps of thick Teflon tape and then I painted it with some thread compound and tightened the hell out of it. And that's the only way I've been able to get a seal here. It's pretty, it can be pretty tricky to get a, a perfect seal on the suction side when you're going PVC into steel like that. So that works for me. It worked every time. I tried a bunch of different configurations until I came up with that one. Uh, some of the other plumbers so I've talked to have said the same thing. In a residential situation you want to wrap it and use compound. You don't want to have to come back for a tiny little leak that drips out one drip every every hour but a leak is a leak so same thing here one and a quarter inch males wrapped with thick teflon painted with thread compound tightened the hell out of it never had a leak no problems at all glue joints i use gorilla one part pvc it doesn't have the purple coloration so it could scare people to think it wasn't done properly but believe me if it's not done properly uh, you're not going to have a suck you're not going to have good suction you're going to be sucking air so i would say this stuff is incredibly tough. It's fast, it's easy to work with, it's not that expensive when you consider the fact that time is money and uh, you don't have to use two different brushes or three different cans. And uh, I've hammered on these with two by fours and mallets and beat the crap out of them and never had a problem. You know, as, I'm, as I've been, maybe I pressed this pipe down a couple inches into the clay, I had to beat the crap out of it for 30 minutes. And there was no, no damage to any of these joints. It held up like as if it was one solid piece of plastic. So a big thumbs up for a Gorilla Glue one part PVC glue that you can get on Amazon. It's good stuff. For power cable I used a 12 gauge. This is a armored cable and um, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to work with really to be honest. Uh, you could use Romex here if you wanted to. You could probably use a, an SJ style power cord that's very flexible and tough. Uh, I just happen to have some AC laying around. I definitely prefer to use 12 gauge for things like this. You could use a 14 gauge and probably not have a, a voltage drop, but this thing drops a 11 or runs 11 amps, so it's a significant amount of of current. And to me, I figure why not use a beefy cable using a 14. A lot of these things I've seen hooked up with 14 gauge, or even in some cases I've seen 16 gauge accessory cables used. So I recommend use 12 gauge. Why why cheap out on something like that? And make sure you got a really good connection for your plug to plug into. You don't want any kind of a weak grip on that thing. Um, now this pump only runs a few times a day for a few minutes, so it's not really, it doesn't have any significant amount of electrical use on your bill. It's not going to uh, maybe cost you, uh, you know, two cents a day to pump water for a, for a typical house. Unless there's a problem with the pump, 
uh, I mean, if there's a problem with the well, if it has to work 